Hi, I'm Jason Hurtis. Today we're going to be talking about managing your total cost of ownership. Hey, it's one thing to talk about operating costs, but there's a lot more in the picture of profitability. We're gonna be talking about some ways and some methods that you can control your total costs and get more out of your fleet. We're gonna break it down into segments to make it easy. We're gonna talk about machine choices and the options of those machine choices or selections. Then we're gonna be talking about electrification. What does that mean? What's the impact to your operating costs and your total cost of ownership of your operation by using electrification? We're going to give you some tips and tricks on maintenance that will help with your operating costs. And throughout all of this, we're going to be using the Caterpillar experts. So come with me. Let's get started. Whether you're looking to purchase a machine or optimize a machine in your fleet that will give you the greatest return on your investment, it is important to calculate a simple cost comparison of the models you are considering. How many hours will this machine generate during the ownership period? Number two, what applications will this machine be working in? And number three, the customer economics. How will you be paid for the work this machine performs? Will it be by the hour or by the unit of measure? To calculate the cost comparison of the models you are considering, there are five terms to the equation. The first is configuration for the best production available. Looking at the machine behind me here, the D6XE, for example, you can get in a push arm configuration or the six-way variable pitch angle and tilt blade as well as several undercarriage options. You will be wanting to make sure you're matching those configurations to the application the machine is gonna be in. Second, are there production advantages of one model over the other models you are considering? Taking into consideration what production do we need to hit on the job site and can that machine achieve those targets? Third, fluid. Fluid consumption is important, but most important is fluid efficiency not only fuel, but also the diesel exhaust fluid. Fourth, maintenance cost. Maintenance cost can be a huge advantage for some machines that are using advanced technologies that allow for fewer maintenance intervals, fewer filters that need to be serviced, as well as less quantity of the fluid contained within the machine. And fifth and final, the cost per hour to operate the machine and the total cost of ownership. When you look at the overall cost of your operation, the cost of equipment and equipment maintenance make up a substantial portion of your overall investment. That's why it's important before you add a machine to your fleet that you not only look at the revenue the machine will generate, but also the cost it will take to operate that machine. I wanna provide you some considerations before you make a selection of a machine. One of the things you need to look at today, Lonnie, compared to in the past is the different trim levels. Automotive's had it for years. You know, you can get a, a half ton pickup truck and you can pick four or five different trim levels. In the construction equipment market, we never had that in the past. You know, it was kind of one size fits all. Now we're moving to trim levels. So you can get a five ton wheel loader with two different trim levels. You can get a 20 metric ton next gen excavator with a couple different trim levels. If you look at the GC models, they are simple, they are basic, they still have technology but it's a limited technology suite. Great for new operators, great for small repetitive applications, moving material from point A to point B. Then if you want to step up to the standard or a premium, you get more technology, payload systems. So you kind of want to look at the trim levels in construction equipment now and understand how you can apply those. And what you're looking for is what is your application? What do you want to do with the machine? And pick the trim level that fits it. If I need more technology, can I add technology to these machines? What does it look like? Are they scalable? What's the cost? And then third, you want to look at the value and the payback of both the machine and the technology. So if I go with a premium machine with all the technology, all the bells and whistles, all the creature comforts, what is that going to look like from a value investment and a payback investment to my operation? 
yes, you can bring up the GC and the XC and all these different choices. And what's resonating with me is there has to be some difference here in the operating cost. And that takes my mind to fuel. Not only fuel consumption, but most importantly, fuel efficiency. The amount of work that I get done per the gallon of fuel that I burn. And that can really add up to a big savings, depending on if you really have the right machine matched to the application that machine is working in. We're talking about total cost of ownership, which is owning cost on the left, operating cost, which is on the right. Fuel is a huge contributor to operating cost. The next one in the operating cost bucket is maintenance costs. And the easiest way to get that is to ask. Dealers will have it, manufacturers will have it. They'll have a monthly average maintenance cost, a yearly maintenance cost. And you can take that number and start working that into your accounting and your information to see, yeah, that maintenance cost is gonna fit with my budgets or maybe that's a little bit higher, but again, it's an average. And I know what my old equipment's been running, so how does that compare to my previous average maintenance cost to the new machine cost so you can make an educated financial decision. Jason, quick question, thinking about this and different technologies and solutions we had um, offered to our customers. Does telematics help in tracking operating costs? I know it's that overall arching umbrella that's very quick and effective in monitoring the health of my machine. How does that fit into operating costs? Is there an advantage there or give me some visibility? Well, to track operating costs, the first thing you need to do is track it. You can track it on paper. So to track fuel, you're gonna to have to have somebody write down the numbers every day. Maintenance costs the same thing. Whether it's the dealer product support or your own technicians, they're gonna to have to write down how much they spend on each machine and what's going on. Using telematics, as you mentioned, does all that for you, and it gives you an overall snapshot. So it makes it faster, easier, more streamlined, and as we all know, time is money. So the less time that you're spending on paperwork or menial tasks you can be spending on bidding the next job or doing the next project that's actually going to bring higher value to you than doing paperwork. So again, telematics is a huge benefit. And it doesn't matter if it's a GC, a standard, a premium machine, telematics is basic for Caterpillar across the board. So you'll get hours, location, fuel, maintenance, you'll have all that at your fingertips. Yeah, all that data really brings visualization into what's happening out in the field could be thousands of miles away. In real time, yes. Absolutely, so another key consideration here, the cost per hour, the utilization, and this all boils down to total cost of ownership. What is going to be that maintenance cost per hour? How many hours a year am I gonna use that machine? We gotta look at utilization, correct? And then we also look at residual values. We look at the end of that life expectancy. When I may be looking to part with that machine, what is the residual value? What is that asset still worth? And even prior to looking at residual value, Jason, we wanna be monitoring, this goes back to that telematics a little bit too, is at what point is this machine maybe costing me a little bit more in maintenance and repair cost? So when we sum all that up, we're really looking at total cost of ownership and all these different attributes that really um, come down to that bottom line when we're comparing those models to really see what's gonna fit into our operation. In summary, we provide you tips on features and the subsequent benefits for the machine, fuel efficiency, maintenance cost, as well as utilization, cost per hour, and the total cost of ownership. All these key decisions will help you make the most informed purchase Sam, commonly when I'm out visiting with customers and trying to do site evaluations with them and they're running D6Ts, they ask me the question, which dozer should I purchase when I'm ready to update my fleet? You have now a D6 and a D6XE. How do I answer that question to yeah, the best of my ability? Good question, Lonnie, and, and that's something that we talk to a lot with customers about is the difference between the two tractors. So uh, the D6 and the D6XE would be the two machines that are in that lineup now. Now our D6 is going to be pretty much a direct replacement for the D6T. Uh, certainly some updates with cab and frame and whatnot, but in terms of powertrain, it's going to be very similar to the D6T. It's a traditional engine with a torque converter, power shift transmission, differential steering, and then out to the final drives. Now the XE represents our electric drive tractor. And so the D6XE being the first high drive electric drive tractor out there has the engine connected to the generator. Generator generates the electricity, puts that back into the inverter, 
the inverter then conditions, manages that electricity, goes down into electric motor that's connected to the differential steering and then splits the torque up between both sides. So truly that electric drive powertrain is what that D6XE represents. You know, commonly a customer will share with me, Lonnie, my unit prices are essentially fixed with my competition. The only way I foresee being able to increase my profitability is lowering my operating cost. If I was to summarize, Sam, what I'm hearing in the field is probably those top three. It comes down to fuel, maintenance, and repair. When we talk about the difference between a D6XE and a traditional D6 tractor, uh, your XE, of course, that electric drive powertrain, is quite a bit more efficient than a traditional powertrain. And so we're looking for most customers in an aggregate application, the XE is going to be a couple dollars less an hour in fuel burn. Uh, we take a look at maintenance as well too. So the D6XE has, uh, in particular, it has less fluid in the powertrain because the electric drive powertrain doesn't, doesn't need the same amount of fluid that a traditional power shift does. So less fluid in the powertrain, and since it doesn't have clutches that traditionally the fluid's you know, required to clean, we get longer life out of that fluid as well too. So just on the maintenance side of it, you know, we're looking at 50 cents, maybe a dollar an hour less in maintenance with that XE because of the easier maintenance and also less fluid and longer intervals on those changes. And then, you know, in addition to those two guys, we talk about repair cost as well. So the electric drive powertrain, again, very different components in here versus <laughs> a, a transmission. So yeah. we don't have all the clutches. We don't have near as many gears in there. Yeah, and that's a common question that's weighing heavily on customers' minds when they hear of a new high drive, electric drive dozer, you start talking inverters and converters and, and cables and things. What does this mean for maintenance and repair? One of the things we tried to do with the D6 XE is try to make it as similar to the D6 as we possibly could. So when you're really looking at your main components, your engine, the cab of course, undercarriage, final drives, all the grease components, hydraulics, very, very similar to the D6 dozer. So if a customer's familiar with working on a D6 dozer, the XE in most of the components, they're gonna be just fine working on those as well too. That takes me to undercarriage and GET, ground engaging tools, Sam. When we look at it from an operating cost standpoint, can you shed a little light on those two items, both the undercarriage and the GET? Yeah, so in general, the D6 and the D6XE are gonna be very similar in terms of operating cost for, for certain of those components. GET, ground engaging tool, you're talking about your cutting edges, you're talking about your ripper teeth, shanks, very similar in that. Undercarriage, for the most part, is gonna be pretty similar. We do have some good traction control in the D6XE, which does help to tame that torque just a little bit. I would be remiss um, if I did not bring up what we like to say the P word, and that's productivity. Can you just give us a little insight on productivity, again, for those customers out there saying, I have D6Ts, I need to update my fleet, and now you've given me a choice. Absolutely. So the electric drive powertrain does provide a bit more torque, and in particular, it's kind of in those higher speeds, kind of in that you know one and a half to two and a half range, where this tractor is going to have a little bit more torque than a traditional D6 or a D6T. So one of the best things about that is we, we do get more productivity in those higher ranges. So when you look at the aggregate application, a little heavy dozing, a little spreading, a little finish grading, D6 XE is going to be roughly 10% more productive productive than a traditional D6. So Lonnie, kind of to summarize things up a little bit, we talk about the D6 XE versus the D6. We're looking at a couple dollars less an hour in fuel consumption, a little bit less in terms of maintenance and repair, maybe a dollar or two dollars when you put those two together in there. Similar GET, ground engaging tool, undercarriage cost, similar operator cost to what you have. So the D6 XE is maybe two to three dollars an hour less in operating cost than a traditional D6. That's real money and real additional profit that they weren't experiencing maybe before. You bet, especially when you lay that extra productivity in there as well too, so. Yeah, it definitely raises the bar and helps them become more competitive and, and again, more profitable, and that's really what they're in the business for, you just bet. to be profitable. Thanks for bringing the question, Lonnie. You're welcome. Thanks for all the insights. I'll make sure to take them to the field with me next time.
When you're talking about owning and operating cost on a dozer, one of the key things on a dozer that you need to be concerned with is GET or ground engaging tools. And that's going to be either your ripper tips, shanks, shank protectors in the back, or your blade cutting edge on the front here. When we take a look at our blade cutting edge, we've got several different options from Caterpillar. Whether you're in hard rock, abrasive materials, or even some sticky clay, CAT has a variety of blade cutting edge options for you to take a look at. Currently shipping on small dozers, D1, D2, D3 size, we have what we call precision cutting edges, where we've moved some of the material around, we've actually made it thicker on the wear portion of the edge, and what that did was is it increased the life of that cutting edge about 20%. So there's two wear indicators that are rolled into that. The first one I like to use as an indicator to order a set of cutting edges, and then when it gets worn down to that second indicator, that's when I think you should replace them. Now on the larger dozers here, D6, D7, D8, we have a brand new style of cutting edge called the Performance Cutting Edge System. This Performance Cutting Edge System includes a series of end bits, edges in both the center and on the outside edges. And what these are is they're completely redesigned to provide more of a swept forward design. Now, down below here, what we're doing is, is we're sweeping that edge forward, and it provides more of a shearing action, a little bit more of a cutting action. All right, so a little bit more of an aggressive cut on that material. Helps you to penetrate in harder materials, such as hard clays, rocks, even compacted sands and gravels. The other bit is that the outside end bit is also swept in a little. So what that's gonna do is help keep the material in front of the blade and reduce the amount of wind rowing that uh, occurs on the outside of the blade. The other thing you notice is that these also have a flat bottom design. And so that flat bottom design allows you to do finish grading with this blade and these edges very, very effectively. Now, my favorite part of this is these edges are designed with roughly twice as much material as a traditional edge, meaning that they do not require a flip to achieve the full amount of wear life potential in that cutting edge. And these are called the performance cutting edges. So lots of different options. Talk to your local cat dealer about what's best for you and the materials that you're working in. It's a really simple concept. The better you take care and maintain a machine, the less likely it is to break down. This increases availability and adds to the bottom line. That's why maintenance is so important. Let's look at some tips here to drive down maintenance and repair cost. First, connect your fleet. Leverage telematics technology for the most cost-effective and thorough way to monitor the condition of your fleet. Number two, perform inspections on your machine before the shift. Leverage the Cat Inspect app and all the predefined templates inside the app to do a thorough walk-around inspection of your machine and send it to your back office in one click of the button. Number three, plan for scheduled maintenance and make sure that it is performed. A simple fluid and filter change can extend the life of your machine. Number four, for the do it for me customers, consult with your dealer and set up a contract for the service and maintenance to be done for you. Number five, enroll in a fluid analysis service. This is the best way to see what's going on inside your machine and potentially prevent a catastrophic failure. So let's review. The five important parts of your preventive maintenance plan should be connect your fleet, perform daily walk around inspections, plan for scheduled maintenance, enroll in a scheduled maintenance plan with your dealer for the do it for me customers, and number five, enroll in a fluid analysis service. So that wraps up today's episode on managing your total cost of ownership, where we gave you some ideas of machine selection, choices, how to optimize and maximize the options of those particular choices, electrification of products, electric drives, electric components, and the benefits of moving to electrification. Also gave you some tips on maintenance that could impact and better control your costs. Hey, if you need to get deeper into the topics that we talked about, Want additional information that you can apply to your particular application or job site? Please check out our resource section. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.